I am super excited and honored to introduce the Wings World Quest 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award winner, someone who is such a personal hero of mine, Dr. Sylvia Earle. When we understand the importance of the oceans to life on the planet, it is really because of Dr. Earl. When we harness our knowledge of the oceans, of life forms and conditions miles beneath the surface, it is because of Sylvia Earl, AKA her deepness. Dr. Earl is a true explorer. She held the world record for an untethered dive, descending 1,250 feet under the Pacific in a pressurized suit. Not a submarine, people, a diving suit. She is such a groundbreaker. She was the first female chief scientist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And if we have hope for life on our planet, it is surely because of Dr. Earl bringing focus to the ocean's resilience by establishing global hope, hope spots, a global network of marine protected areas. Your deepness, Dr. Earl. Hi, Sylvia, how are you? Hi, Katie. Thank you for that really generous introduction. <laughs> oh, please, don't be mad at Sylvia. You're such a rock star and you've done so much. And we're so thrilled to have you with us tonight. Uh, you've been deeper in the oceans and all manner of submersibles, as submersibles than almost anyone on the planet, Sylvia. What is the most amazing thing that you've ever seen in the ocean, the one thing you wish everybody had a chance to see? Well, it's out there, it's down there. I want everybody to go just experience what's going on beneath the surface. You could go almost anywhere, Katie, and not just see something for yourself for the first time, but be the first person ever to see something. There's so little that we we know about the deep sea. You know, we've seen maybe 10% of the ocean. We've only mapped about 15% of the ocean floor with the same kind of accuracy that we have for the moon or Mars, as you heard Diva say, you know? We're <laughs> the greatest era of exploration is just beginning now. I want to talk about that and what the the landscape or seascape, Sylvia, looks like for female scientists. But first, I think people might be interested in hearing what initially piqued your interest. Because as I've watched all these amazing scientists, I, I'm wondering what ignited their curiosity? What made them want to explore? these far-flung places and do this critically important scientific research. Was there a moment for you, Sylvia or Dr. Earl, that you, that made you think, this is this is what I want my life's work to do, be and this is what I want to do? Well, here's the thing. Kids are natural explorers. You don't have to teach a kid to be an explorer. They're, they are asking questions, they want to know who, what, why, where, when, how. And I was really fortunate to have parents and others around me who did not discourage that natural curiosity. So kids start out as explorers. Often it gets sort of pushed out of them. They're told to sit down, be quiet, you know, <laughs> salute. So, uh, I think the best hope that we have right now for a long and prosperous future is with the kids who are coming along with knowledge all around that did not and could not exist until right about now. No one had been to the moon when I was a child. We did not know about our inner biome or about the existence of microbes beneath the bottom of the ocean. We just didn't know. Now, it's knowledge that's available to a much wider audience than, than was even possible to reach when I was a child. I, I relied on books and 
I still rely on books. Look, I'm surrounded by books, but um, <laughs> there are so many ways now to communicate that did not exist. And I am just thrilled to see my, my daughter, Liz, take on the challenge of developing technologies so that the kids of today and their parents and others around them will have access to the ocean in ways that did not exist and could not exist when I was a child. But I got knocked over by a wave when I was three years old. The ocean got my attention and <laughs> it's, life, it's life that that holds my attention. The extraordinary diversity of creatures who are out there are all around us. Even in a city, you can find just the most wonderful forms of life. Ants that are crawling in the cracks, that are <laughs> things that are growing between the cracks in, side in the sidewalk, or a tree. If you look closely, these little winged miracles, we call them insects. But then you get into the ocean, it's where the greatest diversity and abundance of life actually is. You never know what you're going to find when you go into the ocean, but you know it's going to be good. Is Do you think that things have changed? You're such a trailblazer and we're really going where few women dared to go when you started your career. How, has, how have things changed for female scientists and explorers? Um, do you think that they're being uh, more embraced by the scientific community and they're being more encouraged academically. How would you say things have changed since since you started your career? Well, they haven't changed enough, that's for sure. <laughs> but they have shifted significantly. Now, in the field of oceanography, it's not surprising to see not only women scientists, but women captains of the ships, women engineers, um, women doing a wide spectrum of what it takes, what, what humans do, this complex, multifaceted society that, that, that we have. When I first had an opportunity to go on a major oceanographic expedition in the 1960s, it really was unusual for women to participate. And the expedition went to the Indian Ocean. And as we embarked, I was one of 12 scientists. As we embarked from Mombasa, we, the scientific group uh, had a chance to be interviewed by the Mombasa Daily Times. And we poured our hearts out about what it is we wanted to see and what we're hoping to accomplish. But the headline the next day was, Sylvia sails away with 70 men, but she expects no problems. <laughs> I, I, I mean, imagine, Katie, if asking a guy, would there be a problem sailing away with 70 women? I mean, <laughs> I didn't think it was a problem as a woman, but as a scientist, trying to understand what was beneath the boat. We had diving equipment. We were among the first scientists on a major oceanographic expedition to have scuba, let alone equipment that could actually take someone like Diva in a submarine down to as much as a thousand meters or deeper. Hmm. That's, that's, what, that's the new reality that men and women alike now have opportunities that didn't exist when I was coming along as a would-be scientist and explorer. Having said that, you, you just said, Sylvia, that things haven't changed enough. And I'm curious, <laughs> um, you, you uh, have reached the peak of science. You held a key government position. Now you have your own nonprofit. You have influence and standing. You're an ocean elder. 
I don't know how I feel about the word elder. I just think you're an ocean rock star. But why do you think Wings World Quest um, and its unrestricted support of, of women scientists and explorers is so critically important now? Well, as never before, uh, really exploring and having unrestricted funding, even a relatively small amount makes a huge difference, magnified difference. The opportunity to just be able to use your own judgment, this is what I need the most, rather than have to go through a process of justifying every penny, just to have some discretionary support is really meaningful, whether you're a guy or a woman. It, it's the kind of support that is rare, but really especially meaningful. And I think because even in the 21st century, in this country and around the world, they're, they're, we, we still are regarded as women as, you know, we have to sort of justify ourselves as scientists or as explorers, or you certainly must have felt it yourself, Katie in position where the guys dominate. It's just a fact. It's exciting that we are witnesses and participants at this change of attitude because we can help make it happen. And we can do it by being the, the best we can be at whatever it is that we do as women, as whatever we are. And I wanted to ask you, Sylvia, in closing, you know, there are so many problems. This has been such a hard year. I keep having anxiety dreams. I'm sure other people are too. With the pandemic, California wildfires, global warming, um, political rancor and division. Um, this is sort of a, a, a double question. The first part is what gives you hope? And what can <laughs> just the average person do to contribute to, to positive change and be a part of the change they wish to see? Well, you know, I wish I had insight into what each and every person who wants to make a difference, who they are and what, what they're good at, but truly no one knows better than you whoever you are, what you're good at, what you care about, and how you use your time. We can see this avalanche of problems. Choose something that you can do that really makes your heart beat fast. There's so many things. Um, look at you. You are using your talent with words and with ideas as a communicator. Not everybody can do that. Um, it's some people have a, a gift with music. Others have a passion for art. I have a passion for science, for exploration, but whatever it is to be the best you can at it and use that skill to make a difference in a positive way to think, look, Tomorrow will be a better day than today because of something I'm doing. And times seven billion, maybe we'll get to a better place. But <laughs> you know what you know what the problems are. And and we know that even not just the major things you can choose to do professionally or otherwise, but it's all the little things. It, it, we we know about the problems with plastics, for example. We know that what we buy, what we choose to eat or not, again, times 7 billion adds up. And you can be the one doing the one thing that inspires somebody else, that, who inspires somebody else that begins this wave of change. It is happening. It's so exciting to see the kids taking the lead. And it's, Isn't it? Also great to see how 
in the past, you know, women, because of culture, I suspect, have, have been hesitant to step up and hesitant to, you know, raise their hand, if you will. That's changing. And that's what WINGS is honoring and supporting and encouraging to look at who you are and what you can do and to step up. I'm so thrilled to see one of my, one of my own children stepping up. <laughs> Normally it would be the guy who would be the CEO and the instigator. Liz chose well and has a partner, her husband, who's really smart and really good and really talented. And he's quite comfortable doing what he does as the, you know, the head of operations and engineer. It's a partnership. That's what you like to see happening everywhere. That people bring, bring out the best in whoever you are and work with others and respect the good that others are doing. And I, I just, hope that we will come to respect the rest of life on earth and treat whatever it is, fish, squid, octopus, sea urchins, krill, whatever, <laughs> with dignity and respect. Our lives depend on the rest of life on earth. Right now we're treating so many creatures from the sea as nothing more than a seafood dinner. <laughs> it's frustrating when you know what these animals really are and how important they are alive to see them treated just as something to eat you need to think differently something everybody can do <laughs> think differently about life in the ocean well those are very good wise closing words dr sylvia earl it's it's a real privilege to speak with you as i've said i've long admired your commitment and dedication to the world's oceans and they're so important to all of us and uh, thank you for inspiring us tonight so katie do we have a dive plan for some time in the future hmm? <laughs> can we make a deep in the water <laughs> sylvia i'm not a very good swimmer but if you'll work with me i'll 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 be there so maybe we can get one of liz's submarines to Go have a party underwater. <laughs> that sounds fun. That would be great. Thanks, have, Sylvia. Have to get wet. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much.